Hi everyone, welcome back to Grow Roots. This is Shannon and today we are going to be talking about pruning all types of hydrangeas. If you are new to my channel, thank you so much for joining. I put out uh, monthly garden tours for both my front and my backyard as well as some uh, videos here and there about tips on uh, taking care of certain plants and garden maintenance and all of that kind of stuff. So please, before we get started, hit that subscribe button, like, and comment if you have uh, anything to add to the conversation. I'm so happy to read your comments and let's get started. Okay, so hydrangeas are a, a difficult plant for some gardeners. And one of the first things that you need to do in order to properly take care of and think about pruning a hydrangea is you have to know what type of hydrangea you have. So let's go over the five types of hydrangeas really quick because it's really important to know which type of hydrangea you have when you're thinking about pruning it and when is the best time to prune it, if you should prune it at all, all of these things because it has to do uh, with blooming as well. So the first type of hydrangea is hydrangea macrophylla. That's also known as big leaf hydrangeas. So those are the hydrangeas that have the really big leaves, hence the name, <laughs> big leaf hydrangea. They have really big leaves. They also have pretty big, beautiful, round, compact, um, yeah, they're more compacted blooms and then they do come in all kinds of different colors, but the most popular colors that you see are blue and pink and then those colors can change based on the acidity of the soil. So that is hydrangea macrophylla. And then another type of hydrangea is called hydrangea paniculata or panicle hydrangea. So those hydrangeas have much uh, smaller leaves and the leaves are kind of shaped like this if you can see that they're just um they're smaller they're and then the the flowers themselves are also shaped like a panicle or like a cone so they're shaped the like this and they're often really 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 big especially for certain types of um panicle hydrangeas like the the most famous is the limelight hydrangea so that really big beautiful usually white panicle cone shaped bloom. So that's a hydrangea paniculata. The next type of hydrangea is called the Annabelle hydrangea. So that is uh, a lot like the hydrangea macrophylla. It's actually, I should call this, I should call it smooth hydrangea. That is the Annabelle hydrangea. But basically those are like really big, large balls and they're usually white blooms as well. Um, and so that's another type of hydrangea. And then let's see, what am I missing? I am missing, oh, oak leaf hydrangea. So those are really easy to tell because the, um, the leaves are shaped like an oak tree leaf. So an oak leaf um, and that they're beautiful as well. They turn colors in the fall. And then they also have um, their actual individual little flowers on each cone is a little bit bigger, but they're somewhat cone shaped as well. They're longer and elongated. So that's an oak leaf hydrangea. And then the last type of hydrangea is a climbing hydrangea. Somewhat rare. I really have not, I don't know if I've seen a climbing hydrangea in person. I would love to. I would love to grow one as well, but um, they are a little bit harder to find and they're like a climbing vine. And so that is the fifth type of hydrangea. Okay, so I have three of those types of hydrangeas in my garden and I need to remember what type they are and when I'm thinking about pruning them. So the first one is going to be the hydrangea macrophylla. So that's the big leaf hydrangea. I actually have one, two, and then six. So I have eight of those in my yard and it's kind of what I'm somewhat known for in my neighborhood amongst my friends and then also among uh, my followers as well on youtube a lot of them are very surprised that i live in north texas and yet i am able to grow big beautiful uh, hydrangea macrophylla or big leaf hydrangeas i just think there's certain tips and tricks to them um, that help them grow they have a hard time in our heat and they have a hard time in our humidity sometimes but really truly if you put them in the right place and you give them the right conditions that they love they will thrive and mine have certainly thrived uh, but one of the keys to, is 
pruning, in terms of pruning with hydrangea macrophylla, is that you need to remember that this type of hydrangea, usually most varieties bloom on old wood only. And what I mean by blooming on old wood only is that it blooms on last year's growth. It does not bloom on the new growth that pops up from the middle of it. That is not going to bloom for you with most hydrangea microphylla varieties. And so knowing that it's going to bloom on the old sticks, if you will, the old branches that are left over from last season, those um, every leaf node usually pre like starts swelling at about this time of year, which is late winter, early spring, they start swelling and they start creating those buds for next year. Actually, they do that earlier in the winter time, to be honest. And they start creating those, those buds, you know, in the winter. So when I come in and I'm in late winter, early spring, and I'm looking to prune, I'm not going to be pruning back my hydrangea macrophylla by any means. I will be getting rid of um, all of my blooms. Well, most of my blooms. I do happen to have all eight of mine are the endless summer variety of um, hydrangea macrophylla. So what that means is it's an endless summer of blooms. It will bloom on the old growth and it will bloom on the new growth that emerges from the bottom of the plant. So I get usually the first series of blooms is the old growth that pushes out the new leaves and pushes out the new blooms. That will be my first series of blooms, but I will continue to have sporadic blooms from the new growth that pops up in the springtime. So that's really nice. And then sometimes, quite honestly, we get a really late cold snap after the old growth has started to emerge and it kills the old growth. So all of the old blooms, old growth blooms have been killed, but at least I know that I still will have a little bit of a flush of blooms from the new growth that happens. So I'm not really going to prune that back, but what I, I do go in this time of year and what I look for is any dead branches. And it's pretty easy to tell at this time of year which branches are dead because most of the branches, the leaf nodes are starting to swell. They're starting to even push out new leaves. And the, the branches that are not doing that or have any signs of life, I cut those back completely. And then I also look for spindly stems, just really thin, scraggly stems. I cut those out because they're not doing the plant any good. And then I also get rid of any branches that are crisscrossing or creating, you know, um, creating problems with the plant, I'll get rid of those. And then I will also get rid of um, any branches that are going anywhere that I don't want to go. It's fine. I don't want those to bloom anyway. So problematic branches. And if you see that any are diseased, you want to cut those back as well. So that's basically the pruning for hydrangea macrophylla. One more thing to note is if you did want to prune it back hard, if it got too, too big for you, you didn't want it that big, then you would have to wait until that first flush of blooms ends, ends its bloom cycle. And then as soon as it's done blooming, you want to prune it back and then it'll be fine for next year. Uh, it'll have enough time to set those new blooms for the next, for the next year. However, I actually don't like doing that. First off, I kind of like my hydrangeas big. <laughs> and second of all, um, I love to leave the blooms on because I have found out that if you leave the blooms, at, at first they turn this green color, which I'm not a huge, huge fan of, um, but instead of dying off after that, like I kind of thought they would, um, if you leave them on in the fall time, they start turning pink and then they start, they'll turn like a really deep magenta color in the late fall and it's absolutely beautiful. And my hydrangeas are just a spectacular, like at Christmas time, to be honest. I just love them so much when I leave the blooms on them. So I've been doing that for a few years now and that's been successful for me. So other than just pruning back the dead stuff and the spindly stuff and the diseased stuff, I don't really prune my hydrangea macrophyllas at all. So the next type of hydrangea is hydrangea paniculata that I have uh, growing. I have a, um, I have a limelight in my backyard that was actually propagated from a limelight that I lost last year. <laughs> but um, I was able to propagate it in the propagation, the, the cutting really, really thrived last year. And so I've planted it into the ground. And so I do have a regular size limelight. I also have a um, 
a little lime that I put in place of the limelight that passed. So I do need to go ahead and prune that. And then, oh, that's right. I had two cuttings. So I actually have two regular size limelights. One is in a, in a container on my back porch. Well, it's in the sun though. And then I have another that I've planted in the landscape. So two limelights. And then I have a third limelight, to be honest, and that is in my front yard. And that I have trained into what they call a limelight standard. So uh, it has a single stem, and then that branches off into multiple branches. And uh, I have trained it into a tree form. And they call that a limelight standard. I think I'm actually going to do a separate video for that because I want to talk about all about how I actually trained my limelight into a limelight standard. And so uh, stay tuned for that video, probably coming up pretty soon. But Hydrangea paniculata, basically they bloom on new wood. So what that means is they bloom, they bloom on each year's new growth. The old growth is just basically there to help stabilize the plant and push out the new growth. But the old growth is not gonna bloom for you. It's the new growth that's gonna be blooming. And uh, right about this time of year, you again, you start looking at those leaf nodes, you start seeing the swelling at the leaf nodes, and you kind of know which branches are alive and which branches uh, maybe aren't producing. Although I have to say my hydrangea paniculatas are a little bit behind the macrophyllas in the sense that not all of the leaf nodes are swelling right now and they're just barely beginning to swell and show signs of growth. So it's a little bit difficult to tell right now. But um, generally speaking, now late winter, early spring is the best time to prune them. And you want to prune that before a lot of the new growth happens because you want the plant to be stable. So hydrangea paniculatas require pruning every single year. If you want your plant to be strong and you want those stems to stay sturdy and stay upright and not flop over, you're gonna have to create a strong base for that. And what that includes is pruning it uh, once a year at this time of year. And that that just helps stabilize, it helps the, the old growth gets stronger and especially cutting out all of the spindly stems you don't want any new growth happening on those spindly stems because they are just going to flop over it's going to create a weak plant and a weak part of that plant so um, it's really important to to prune your hydrangea paniculatas every single year but the rule of thumb is do not prune them back anymore than one third of the total size of the plant. So for instance, if you're, if you have a limelight hydrangea and it is six feet tall, you don't, by the end of your pruning, you don't want that, um, that limelight hydrangea to be any shorter than four feet tall. So that's one third of the plant that you have cut away and you've just created a stronger base and, and better stem growth and all that kind of stuff. But if you do too much more than that, it could potentially hurt the plant. However, I think limelights are very forgiving in terms of pruning and you could give it a really hard prune. I think it would probably be okay, but the rule of thumb, this, the industry standard for pruning hydrangea paniculata is do not cut more than one third of the growth away. The third type of hydrangea that I have in my yard that I will talk about pruning today is the oak leaf hydrangea. So I just picked up an oak leaf hydrangea. It is, I believe it's called a dwarf Alice in Wonderland. Um, it's a white one and I have it in a part, part shade area of my side yard. The oak leaf hydrangea is gonna be much the same as the hydrangea uh, macrophylla in the sense that it blooms on old wood only. Um, it doesn't have a variety that blooms on new wood. It blooms on the old wood only. So if you are pruning at this time of year, you are cutting away your blooms. So don't do that. <laughs> if you want to prune your oak leaf hydrangea, they do, they can get really, really massive. So if you do want to prune your oak leaf, the right time to do that is after it's finished blooming. So that's the right time. And that would not be now. It would probably be Oh, maybe midsummer. I think it's going to bloom in the spring and you know that bloom might last you through early summer but probably by midsummer you might want to be cutting that uh, or pruning that hydrangea back and that would just be again probably same rule of thumb do not do any more than one third of the total size of the plant. I would probably keep that rule 
but um, but yeah, you can go ahead and prune them then. I am gonna go ahead and look at mine today. I'm just gonna make sure that there's no diseased branches. I noticed some leaf spotting in late fall, like early winter, like the, the really pretty fall oak leaves were showing me spots. And this is my first oak leaf hydrangea. I don't think that's common. I think that the spots mean that there might have been a bacterial or fungal disease. And so I want to make sure that none of those branches look diseased. If they do, I will cut that off, but I, I am noticing some brand new growth on my oak leaf. So I definitely don't want to take away anything that's going to, um, to take away my blooms for this year. So those are the three types that I have. I do not have any smooth hydrangeas. I do not have um, any climbing hydrangeas. So we're not gonna talk about that in today's video. I did wanna mention one more thing, going all the way back to hydrangea macrophylla. I do have one type of hydrangea macrophylla that I wanted to talk about that is like a lace cap hydrangea. And I wanted to let y'all know that lace cap hydrangeas are considered hydrangea macrophylla or big leaf hydrangea, and they only bloom on old wood. So when I said I had eight <laughs> hydrangea macrophylla, I was counting the eight endless summer hydrangeas that I had, and then I had completely forgotten about the lace cap hydrangea that I have. And so my lace cap hydrangea is planted in a pot right next to one of my big, um, you know, endless summer hydrangeas. And it's, it, this will be my second full season with it. Last year, I did not get to see it bloom and I was so upset, but now that I'm thinking about it, I know that it blooms on old wood only. It does not bloom on new wood, on new growth. And I think, if I think back, I didn't have any growth on the old wood last year that I can recall. I think all of the growth on that plant was new growth. And so that's why I did not see any blooms last year. So when you're thinking about hydrangeas, one of the most common questions that comes up is my hydrangea isn't blooming. Why isn't it blooming? Well, sometimes it's because you pruned it at the wrong time and you've cut off all your blooms because it blooms on old wood or if it's, it's a type that blooms on old wood. I'm sorry, there's an airplane above us. We are in the flight path of DFW airport. So sometimes in my videos, you will see that. I will try to edit that out. Hopefully you can still hear me pretty well. I've also got some wind going on today. We're just dealing with the elements. But um, anyway, the, the question of why isn't my hydrangea blooming can often be answered by, did you prune it at the wrong time? Or uh, did something happen? Was there a cold spell um, that completely killed your old growth? Uh, like maybe it's, Maybe it's like Texas, it just happens every year. We get warm, we get warm spells in January and February, and then we'll get hit by a cold spell. And I mean, really, really cold. So the warm spell is enough to get the hydrangea macrophylla because they, they do start their growth really early, early, early spring. And so they'll start growing and then they get hit by a cold spell. And then unfortunately that kills all of your blooms that we're going to be created on that old growth. So a lot of times that's why it's not blooming. That was just a little side note, but I wanted you to know that lace cap hydrangeas fall into the category of hydrangea macrophylla. They bloom on old wood. So you do not want to prune them at this time of year. You want to prune them right after they're done blooming if you're gonna prune them at all. Okay, so let's get started and you can see how I prune my hydrangeas. Okay, so this is a big leaf hydrangea, hydrangea macrophylla. As we already discussed, this is not going to be a big prune job at all. But I'm just going to be going in and looking at branches that might be dead. I'm going to cut those back completely. The spindly branches are going to be gone. And I did want to point out that I have left the leaves and some of the old blooms. I'll cut off some of the old blooms just under the bloom. <laughs> Uh, so as not to cut off any like of the new growth, but I have left the leaves on and I'm going to continue to leave the leaves on because we're in this wishy-washy time of it getting really warm, which is why you see some new growth, but that new growth could easily be damaged by a deep freeze. So I'm leaving those old leaves on to kind of insulate any new growth that comes up. So I'm just leaving that on. It's just going to be there. All right, so here we go. 
So you got to get a, a good set of pruners. Um, these are from House and Garden. I picked these up from Amazon and they are really, really, really good. I love them. I will have a link to them underneath in the description if you guys want to get some for yourself. But you want to sterilize your pruners because you don't want to cross contaminate from any other plants. And come on in and let's see what we've got. All right, so automatically I'm looking at this and just moving it has broken the stem so I know that it is dead. I'm gonna go in and cut that out. So you can see it just, that is one dead stem. So you wanna cut all of those that you think are dead completely away. There's, I think this one is completely dead as well. I'm gonna cut it down. This one is also kind of diseased. You can see this spotting on it. Um, I don't like that and it, it doesn't have any new growth on it at all. So that's coming off. It looks like a lot of the interior of the plant is, um, is dead stems and that's okay. So I just wanted to call attention to this branch right here. As you can see, there is new growth coming right there. This growth was a little bit fried to be one, by one of the freezes, to be honest, it came out early, but all that's ahead of it is dead. So I wanna cut that off, but I don't wanna cut this because there is growth there. And so yeah, I'm gonna go and take that too. And so that's how you'll want to cut the ones that have blooms on them, old blooms, but still have new growth. Okay, so you may not be able to see it, but I am standing right behind my hydrangea paniculata. This is a little lime hydrangea, and I'm going to be coming in and pruning this one as well. So remember with hydrangea paniculata, basically uh, it blooms on new growth only. So I'm um, you know, it's a good, that's good news for me because that means I'm going to get blooms guaranteed and now is the best time to prune. And so I'm going to show you how the leaf nodes eh, are starting to swell a little bit. I'm starting to see a little bit of growth at some tips and um, I'll show you the spindly stuff that I'm going to cut off as well. I just want to make this plant as strong as possible because it is kind of still a baby. And so I wanna make sure that the new growth coming in and the new blooms aren't too floppy this year and they're nice and big and strong. Okay, so here it is. I have to be careful not to be stepping on my daffodils and I have a coreopsis here. Oh my goodness, okay. Anyway, let's take a look. You can see that this is definitely further behind than the macrophylla or the big leaf hydrangea that I have. There is no new growth really whatsoever that we can really see unless we get in here, but so you can kind of look for, this is last year's cut. I hope you can see that. This is where it was cut last year. And then this is the new growth, a new branch. And this is a new branch from last year as well. So looking in, you can kind of see that there are going to be new stems. And there are actually new stems kind of popping up at the begin at the end of last fall. And I think that's what you're seeing. Um, but I'm going to cut this back probably down to the last leaf node because I can see that this, this node is swollen right there. And so I'm going to cut it probably right there because I really want this branch, which is not the strongest branch. I need it to be not so floppy. Um, this, this little guy right here was 
I think new growth potentially, or maybe even last year. It's got to go. It's, it's spindly. It's, it's not going to, it's going to flop. So I'm definitely cutting this guy away. And then for instance, this, this is last year's cut right there. This is last year's new growth. And, uh, that node is questionable to me. I don't know if I see growth on that node or this node. I do see this node is swelling. That makes me, mm. okay. I think I, I'm going to take chances and I'm going to cut that one right here too, because I really don't want that to get floppy. So that's kind of what I'm going in. Like, see this? Yeah, that's dead. Anyway, that little spindly guy just kind of broke off in my hand. This little spindly guy has got to go. Um, this guy is crisscrossing. Do you see this? This, there is some crisscrossing going on. So this guy, this spindly guy is definitely got to go as well. And then this one is a nice strong branch from last year. And so let's see, I'm probably going to prune that maybe down to there. It's a fairly strong one. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much what I'm doing here. Let's go ahead and get at it. Okay, so that about does it for this little lime. Um, again, you kind of don't want to prune it any more than one third of its size. I, there were some stems definitely that I cut back way, by way more than one third because they were just not strong. They were kind of spindly. And so I'm trying to make sure that all of the growth that comes up is going to be on a nice, strong, sturdy branch. So this branch, I definitely left longer than all of the other ones for a couple of different reasons. It's really, really nice and sturdy. So um, that's the main reason. And it's part of a real it's part of the base there as well so um yeah i think that will do really nicely i think it will do well and i also wanted to point out here are some of my cuttings okay truly it's kind of a baby plant so i didn't have a whole lot of really good cuttings so the two good cuttings that i got from this only two whereas oh my gosh last year i probably had 20 amazing cuttings from my limelight but these two look at these these are pretty good cuttings um if you are into propagating and creating new plants this is a really good opportunity i honestly last year after i trimmed my limelight i just basically stuck the stuck these in soil i didn't do a darn thing i didn't trim these I didn't, um, I didn't get rid of like these little branches, nothing. I just stuck it in a container that had soil in it. And then I also like, I planted flower seeds in that container because I was like, well, if they don't, if they don't stick, at least I make sure that this container is continued to be watered and there's other life growing in the container. So, but basically what happened is where these little leaf nodes are that are still alive, roots can potentially start growing out of each node and it could create a brand new plant for you now gosh out of i don't know i i had 20 cuttings i probably only stuck i think i stuck 10 of them in soil last year and i got two or three really really good plants and i actually have a video on that um of how I separated them after they were growing in that container. I separated it into two really strong limelight hydrangeas. And that's what I have growing in my garden now. But um, 
go ahead and watch that video if you want to see what they turn out like but yeah these could definitely be stuck in soil and you could create brand new plants if you if you kind of monitor it you can't keep it too moist you can't keep it you can't let it dry out all of that good stuff but by the end of the season you could have brand new um, baby and this would be a little lime it's super exciting all right so the last type of hydrangea that i have in my garden is an oak leaf hydrangea and so here's what mine looks like right now um actually a lot of this is no these are the new leaves i did go ahead and defoliate all of the old leaves and this is new growth <laughs> how exciting is this uh but i just i just want to go in and kind of look and see if any part of it needs to be trimmed if any part of it is dead disease crossing over and you can see where last year's cut was but this is all new growth wow wowzers that's insane i didn't realize like all of this has just happened in the last couple weeks y'all that's insane okay that's so cool um you can see it's growing there really truly I mean, there's maybe one little thing right here, but I don't think it's doing any harm to anything and it just kind of crumbled anyway. Um, this plant was really well, oh, you know what? This is crossing over. Do you see that? <clears throat> this branch is going through another branch and crossing. So I either need to untangle that or I need to cut that branch even though it has new growth on it i hate to do that but i might be able to get it out of there let's see if i take this old tag off i leave the tags on when i can because i like to remember what they're supposed to look like and how to take care of them because i like the i love the care tags but it has to go off right now so let's see if i can get this out of there to where it's not creating an issue get it out without breaking anything. Come on, guy. Oh, see, I feel like I'm gonna break that right there. Let me see if I can pull that. Yes, okay, so I basically just pulled it apart. And although this is still not ideal, these this crossing over this, I still, <laughs> I still don't want to cut any potential blooms that would be created there. And let's just, I mean, if I was a grower and I really only wanted this plant to look amazing and how it should, then I probably would trim that right there because it, it's kind of a problem. But anyway, okay, I'm going to, it hurts me. It hurts me to cut something off that's potentially growing. And I've never propagated an oak leaf, but maybe, just maybe, I wonder if that can be stuck in soil and kept alive. And then it, it and then would it create a root? We could find out. We could totally find out. Anyway, okay, so that is the oak leaf. There's really nothing to do here because everything looks super strong, super sturdy growing really really well i'm super happy with it all that brown right there that's all new growth it's interesting that the oak leaf growth is brown this is my first experience with it so this is why you see i'm like ooh, look at that that's crazy it's crazy good growth okay so there you have it those are the three types of hydrangeas that i have in my yard and how i prune them when I prune them or if I prune them for the best potential blooms each and every year. I hope that you learned something. I hope that you're inspired to grow some hydrangeas in your yard because I really truly feel if you live in zones three through eight, you can also grow hydrangeas if you put them in the right environment and give them what they need. And pruning is a big part of what they need or the care that they need and whether they bloom for you, all that good stuff. That's a huge part of it. So I hope this was informative. Please let me know. And I hope you have a fantastic day. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. Bye-bye.